In the treasury of the Kofkuji Temple in the ancient Japanese city of Nara is a statue that is 600 years old. It is the god with a thousand arms. Nearly all the gods' 1,000 hands hold a different weapon, and each weapon demands a different skill. The weapons are a catalogue of the martial arts in medieval Japan. Six hundred years later, the same weapons are still used in Japan, but no longer in battle. The way of the warrior has become, for many people, the way of the sportsman. The ancient techniques have been developed to fit into the modern world. Also in the Kofkuji temple, there is a group of rare wooden statues, about four inches high, of warriors in fighting postures. Some unarmed, some with weapons. They were also carved about 600 years ago. They show, in their variety of gesture, that the same basic movements have been used in fighting throughout the centuries. There's a continuity between the warriors of that time and the sportsmen of today. Only the purpose has changed. the ancient Japanese traditions suffered a traumatic shock when the Emperor of Japan surrendered in 1945. The American administration of Japan considered that the martial arts encouraged militaristic behavior and stopped the practice of them. Instead, the Japanese were encouraged to take up American sports and the American way of life. They accepted many aspects of it eagerly and it caused a revolution in their mental attitudes. Many of them were no longer content to accept that the main purposes of practicing a martial art were philosophical and religious. And as a result, many of the old forms have been turned into sport. Aikido is a sport that arose from this process. Once it was a true martial art, called Aiki Jujutsu. Then between the 1920s and the 1940s, it was changed into Aikido, and it became a way of life. After 1949, it divided into two main schools. One continued to follow tradition, the other transferred it into a sporting system with fighting contests. This is called Tomiki Sport Aikido, after the master who developed it. An Aikido contest is fought between a man holding a rubber dagger and his unarmed opponent. The contest is won by scoring points, awarded for a successful stab with a dagger or a successful counter to it. Before 1945, there are only a handful of Westerners practicing fighting arts. Though the Chinese and other fighting systems are practiced throughout the world, they are still minority sports outside their own countries. The Japanese arts are the ones that are internationally popular. There are shops in Tokyo where it's as normal for the customers to be Western as Japanese. Hi. The customers are often men whose lives have been fundamentally changed by their training in fighting arts and the philosophy that is taught with them. Jim Elkin was such a man. 
He was known throughout Britain as a master of Aikido and vice chairman of the Martial Arts Commission. This film is based on his ideas and experience. Unfortunately, he is a silent witness, since he had not recorded his contribution before he died in January 1982. The shop that he visited is well known to British martial artists, many of them buy their equipment here. This international aspect of the fighting arts is one of the most important side effects of its worldwide growth. In this process, prejudices are shed and lives are enriched. This is exactly what happened to Jim Elkin. He was a member of the British security services for many years and much of his life is still secret. He also knew ancient Japanese martial techniques and especially the use of the Jo or staff. Aiki Jujutsu is the martial ancestor of the gentler Aikido. First, I attack the armor here and attack a vital point to paralyze the arm. Now, I attack the next vulnerable part, which is the wrist, and I break it. And you, because of the thing, will open the fingers and lose the knife. Then I take the arm up so and jerk violently, which dislocates the shoulder. To finish off... He demonstrated these techniques to Japanese students of Aikido, who don't usually study the older systems. Within Japan, even Jiu-Jitsu, the martial ancestor of Judo, is rarely studied. I am in an attack here, control the wrist, break it, bring the hand up to the throat, keeping this pressure on here, and take away the throat. Here. Stretch across, collapse the knee. At the relief of Singapore, Jim Elkin was a young rating in the British Navy. He saw the condition of prisoners in the Japanese prison camps, which left him with strong anti-Japanese feelings. However, in the 1970s, he met Master Kuguri, and they became close friends. This friendship changed Jim's mind about things Japanese. He became a Buddhist and head of the international section of the Tamiki Aikido Federation. Kuguri is a master of Aikido. He enjoys demonstrating brutally the effectiveness of Aikido against karate techniques. Master Kaguri enjoyed sharing all aspects of Japanese life with Jim Elkin, including the ritual of the bath, with a traditional meal to follow. Japanese food is a mixture of nourishment and display, so that a raw and still moving lobster is a great delicacy. The look is even more important than the taste. The arrangement of a formal room for entertaining includes strategy for self-defense. A samurai host could never be certain that he could trust his guest. 
Usually the guests sit uh, over there, so you sit over there. Thank you. I'm a Japanese. The host now sits where, in more dangerous days, the guest used to sit. It was an act of folly to sit with your back to the paper screen doorway. Uh, welcome to Japan. Senpai once more. Thank you, Cheers. Senpai. The screens that surrounded the host concealed his bodyguard, who could burst in to defend their master. Though in ordinary life the Japanese no longer take such precautions, there are still some who think it necessary. I found uh, several differences, you know, between the Western martial arts and the Japanese or the Eastern martial arts. Yeah. One thing is, um, West in the West there is a boxing and wrestling. No, there are the weaving and ducking and the jumping, mm -hmm. and in Japan the, all of the martial arts like judo, kendo. Or karate, Aikido, the movement is the head never move and walk like this, you know, the steps like this. It's, um, yes, it's yeah. tsugiyashi. Yeah. And in the Western, there's a jumping, you see. And I wonder why there's a difference between the two. And this is because the Japanese was basically the agricultural nation. In agriculture, you know, when you have these, uh, these things and to put the soil down, and we move in this case one, two, never walk like this. And all the martial arts movements, as well as the kabuki, you know, is this type of the movement. And against in hunting, then we must run. And we must say, hey, Jim, take that animal, take that. And so we run. And this kind of, I think, the wrestling and the boxing, jumping, <coughs> and in Japan, <coughs> never jumping, the head never moves. But I think there's a basic, you know, the motif of the martial arts in the two different ways. Master Kaguri has achieved such command of the Tamiki style of Aikido that he is able to demonstrate the effectiveness of the art at great speed. He uses techniques taught only to advanced students, applying painful locks, chokes, and pressure to the nerves. In fighting, you know, the time you are, when I attack you is when you breathe in, like, yeah. and when you're breathing, I hit you. But in Japanese, between the Japanese fighting, I can easily get the breathing times. But the foreigners find always the breathing out is more. Mm -hmm. So it is very difficult to find his breathing in. And I wonder why. Then I. Somebody told me this is because of the language. Like, English accent is always pushing out, like, fine, okay, yes, let's go, no. Right? Mm -hmm. Japanese is breathing in. Iwa, Jim san. So, eh? And always think about the enemies. Suddenly, if somebody attacks from here, then I have to stand up. <coughs> and I have to stand and to fight, you see. And therefore, I can't sit like this. I must always move, you see. Yeah. <coughs> and if I sit down like this, and stamp, and with the knees. Yeah. And always right knees up because my sword so, is here, yeah. you see. <coughs> and the, so, therefore, the posture, his eyes arrangement and these type of things are very much important in Japanese in all, even in ordinary life. Aikido is very popular amongst Japanese university students. It's practiced enthusiastically and thoroughly by large numbers of them. This is a typical class from Waseda University. Go! Look! Sit! 
क्यों जो एच ए When the students' bodies are supple and warm, they move on to practicing the basic movements of Aikido. The idea of moving calmly and rotating the arms in circles to defend oneself originated in China. There also, the fighters had a profound understanding of the joints, muscles, and vital points of the body, and developed ways of throwing or paralyzing an attacker. For centuries in Japan too, these principles of soft or internal martial arts have been used in combat training. In modern Aikido, the dangerous techniques have been eliminated, but the mental approach remains the same. One of Jim Elkin's friends in Japan was Master Oba, a master of Aikido, and also a master of judo and many weapons systems. He is over 70, but he still teaches actively in several universities. In his long life, he has been awarded a total of 38 dans, the highest number ever earned by a Japanese individual. His life has been devoted to the fighting arts, especially as a teacher of university students. He thinks that sport is an essential part of training. それを今日において、その精神を鍛えようとするとすれば、やはりスポーツの場でやらせないとダメなんですね。だから昔の戦場に変わる現代では、そのスポーツの場で精神を鍛える、そういう考え方が古武道の現代化。Aikido was not changed instantly from a martial arts to a sport. In between is the classical Aikido, still practiced and still important. When a fighting art is developed for sporting purposes, there are games, but also certain qualities are lost. The older system's prepared exercises take the time to be more complex and elegant. The very complicated holds work like chess moves. Each grip is a counter to the last. They are practiced so that one person performs the winning moves. Two masters fighting together would use these techniques until one of them achieved a move that the other couldn't counter. Like many Japanese systems, Aikido, even practiced as a sport, aims to cultivate the mind and spirit as well as the body. By repeating the moves in a classical manner, the girls can concentrate on perfecting their actions. The effectiveness of these throws and locks is secondary to the aim of performing them perfectly. なかなか... その心を現代に生かそうとすることが難しいようです。え、それでその心の方を鍛えるためにはどうしても競技の場から若い人たちに心を持たせること、これが現代の競技になるだろうと思うんですね。All Aikido is based on the same principles, but the sporting style is simpler. It's more direct and faster in action. Master Oba has lived through these developments. He knew them. Master Oba has lived through these developments. He knew the masters who initiated them and the long arguments that divided the world of Aikido.
There are now two main schools. One, the school of Master Weshiba, has rejected the sporting way. The other follows the teachings of Master Tomiki, who led the movement for change. しかし今まで合気道競技始めました。しかし今まで合気道をやっておった先生方は、トミック先生のやることに賛成しません。誰も集まってきません。今は若い人たちがこの恋のようにたくさんに集まって合気道を辞めん。たくさんに今試合をや
After the war, Naginata almost disappeared as a result of the American prohibitions. Sawada Sensei, with her colleague Yoshida Sensei, were two of those who led the revival. When the practice of martial arts was permitted again, all the remaining Naginata schools combined to develop a modern form. Traditional Naginata was the art of cutting. New Naginata is the art of striking. Sawada Sensei teaches the classical style in the mornings, but in the afternoon the class turns to the modern combat sport. Sport Naginata schools are the most popular women's martial training in Japan today. Besides learning basic techniques, the women test each other's skills in contest. To reduce the chances of injury, the training weapons have been modified. They have a light split bamboo blade on the end of the shaft. Armour covers the main target areas, which are the head, neck, shoulders, forearms, trunk and shins. The contestants must shout out the name of their target just as they launch an attack and the judges then decide whether the blow strikes home accurately or not. The evolution of the Japanese martial arts has not been a simple process because they are so deeply involved with the nation's religion and culture. The martial arts became a way of meditation, a part of Zen Buddhism, and sometimes not even a way of self-defense. These ritualistic strokes with swords could be used for fighting, but that is not the purpose of the practice. These men are concentrating on reaching perfection in their actions. For them, the perfect performance of the ritual is to achieve a state of Zen. This perfection can be expressed in many ways, by calligraphy, or the tea ceremony, or in the martial arts. For many Japanese, this is enough. They are content to perfect their art. However, development was possible. Out of the trance of Zen sword practice came the violent sport of kendo. But it is not just a sport in the Western sense. Within it, there is also philosophy and a way of life. It's because of this complexity that Kendo attracts many Westerners to study it. Some give up their settled lives and travel to Japan to practice. This is what Les Denniston did three years ago. He left Glasgow and came to Kyoto and supports himself by teaching English. Les performs his solitary exercises on the roof of his flat, completing a thousand sword strokes each day before going on to the dojo to practice. Before starting Kendo, uh, I would dis have described myself aggressive, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But uh, you lose your aggression or you learn to control it. Yeah. I started originally because I was very fat and I became interested in, uh, after I lost weight, I became interested in the spirit, the mind of Kendo. But it, it can really change you. It becomes your life. Kendo is not a sport. The sport you play for enjoyment or for entertainment. Kendo, the Japanese call Kokoro no Shigyo, spiritual training. And I became really interested in that aspect of Kendo. Les was lucky. He was accepted into a small dojo with several Kendo masters. One evening a week is devoted to the practice of ritual sword strokes.
In Japan, the tendency of the teacher is not to teach you by a spoken word. He will keep striking you in one place where your weakness lies. He will keep striking you. So eventually you learn the painful way, the hard way to stop that weakness. In Kendo, my weakness is my wrist, Kote. Eh? So the Kendo teacher just continually hits you, strikes you, and eventually you learn. You learn, okay, it's really painful. Many foreigners come and they want to do something, some modern discipline. And the first time they're hurt or the first time they experience any pain, they stop. They won't continue. And in Japan, the important thing is to continue. No matter how bad you are or how bad you feel you are, you continue. If the teacher sees this spirit determination, then you can really, he'll meet you halfway and you must come the other half. And you can really advance. But Westerners, are, yeah, Westerners uh, tend to be egotistical. In Kendo, if you get hurt, it's not so much your body that gets hurt, it's your ego. Yeah? Ego gets hurt, so the people stop. Yeah, they've been defeated, you know, they feel, I've been defeated. If you want to overcome others, you must first overcome yourself, your own weaknesses. <laughs> The rules of kendo dictate that an attack may only be started with the right foot forward and attacks must be aimed at areas which are covered in armor, the head, shoulders, chest or upper forearm, none of which would have been a target in real fighting. People, beginners especially, follow their instincts and raise their hands to protect their head which leaves the body open or they'll make their instinct will defeat them. You have to overcome your instincts and stand there strongly. But Kendo and Zen basically have the same, same purpose to destroy the ego. The atmosphere in a Kendo dojo has a powerful sense of controlled violence. The shouts are full of intensity. The fighting is fast and ruthless. The contestants are tuned to a high pitch. Their minds reach a special intensity, both calm and yet racing, alert to every tiny movement of their opponent. The Japanese call it Ichigo Ichie, which means every time is the last time. This is a real fight, you know, the last time. And you're serious and you're directly, you're not casual in any way. Your attitude must not be casual. No matter, even if you've beaten the guy, you must still 
be alert and aware and have respect for your opponent. It's like a spring just waiting to go to see the opportunity of moving. If your opponent shows a weakness, take it quickly and seriously. No smiling, no laughing. It's not a laughing matter. <laughs> Les Deniston and the late Jim Elkin both had their philosophy of life changed by their contact with the Japanese fighting arts. They are not alone. Theirs is the common experience of serious students who are taught by masters of ability and integrity. At the heart of the old martial arts and the new sporting system is an ideal of self-control and a distaste for violence. Aggression is based on fear, basically frightened inside. And after a few years of training, it's quite hard now. You, you lose it. You don't need. I'm training every day in fighting. I don't need it anywhere else. Uh, I don't want to fight anyone. Only in the dojo. That's all. But before I was a nasty piece of work. 